folks, this is Ben from Road to VR here at Engadget Expand New York 2013, and I'm here with Ed from Avagant, who is a maker of a forthcoming head-mounted display that we've got some questions about. Sure. So can you give us just kind of a brief overview about the product? What makes the display unique? So the display, uh, we're developing this brand new re revolutionary display technology. We're trying to bring to the market what's called a virtual retinal display. What a virtual retinal display, how that's different from traditional displays is there's no emissive panels, there's no LCDs, there's no OLEDs. In fact, there's no screen at all. The image is being projected directly into your eye, directly on your retina, because we're actually able to mimic the way you naturally see. And whose idea was this technology? Is this something that you guys have come up with internally? Uh, so my co-founder actually had been working on the technology for a couple of years. Um, he was working on it as a separate project and we decided to commercialize this technology about a year ago. And um, what is your target market? Are you looking for virtual reality or entertainment or somewhere in between? There's a lot of markets we're looking at, but in the consumer market itself, we're looking for more of a general purpose multimedia device, right? Something that works really fantastically with all your current media, media you already own, media you can buy today, as well as all the games you can buy today. So like today at Engadget Expand, we have it working with the new Call of Duty Ghost running off of PlayStation 3 with head tracking in a pretty, pretty immersive experience. And is what we saw today close to the final product, or is it going to be changing quite a bit? It's not even close. Uh, what you're seeing today is just a purely engineering prototype, just a concept to show you what the core technology looks like. We're heavily involved in product development today, and the next product, next prototype you're going to see in, the, in a couple months is going to look completely different. We're starting from the ground up with completely new optics, new electronics, new form factor. I think people are going to be really excited about what we're coming to the market with. And today we saw it functioning with pre-existing media um, and for the virtual reality end of things, people are really interested in field of view. Is there any reason that you guys couldn't push this from what it is right now, which is probably 45 or 50 degrees to, to something further than that? We absolutely could uh, push it to a greater field of view. But one of the things that we, we wanted to work really well with is all the media you have today, all the, all the movies you have today, and all the games you have today. This is media that's already been optimized for a certain field of view. And so if you wanted to use it with existing games, existing consoles, or all the movies you have today, or you want to run it off your tablet or your smartphone, that kind of field of view works really well uh, with, with of the devices and the media that people already own. So that's what we're focused on today, is to give people a really fantastic experience that they can have right now. And so you've told us that even though the source uh, input quality of the videos that you're showing is, is not, it's 720 from most of what we saw, yeah. it, it still looks extremely sharp. Can you talk about why the eye perceives it that way with this technology? Yeah, so there's a couple of reasons why. I mean, people, people look at the, some of the media that we're putting into this thing. Like you said, a lot of stuff we're putting into 720p right now, but the image quality is so sharp, it's so crisp, that a lot of people look think it's, it's almost 4K level of quality. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. One is we're giving people that natural light and it's just more comfortable for the eye. Your eye tends to perceive it as being more realistic. The second thing that we don't have a problem with is fill factor. You know, a lot of LCD and OLEDs have very poor fill factors. And for every color, they're seeing you know, less than 30% fill factor generally. And so there's no screen door effects, there's no gaps between any pixels, and things just blend beautifully right on your retina. And so things just look more real with the more natural light that we're giving you. Now, when people hear retinal display yeah. and hear anything about yeah. anything projecting sure. onto their retina, yeah. it's, it's disconcerting for some people. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about why this isn't an issue? Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything we see today is projecting light into your eye, right? All the objects we see around us is reflecting light, the light's bouncing into the eye, and it's exactly what we're doing, is we're just recreating that natural light. And we're not using any kind of like high-powered lasers, we're just using a very low-power LED light source, totally you know, trying to create that natural light at the intensity that you're used to seeing, and that you know, there's no issues with safety or danger or anything. You know, trying to, we're, we're literally trying to mimic your natural vision. And so the current product is producing the retinal display with an array of LEDs, correct? Mike, no, you have a single LED with uh, a couple of arrays of micromirrors. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about, about uh, I'm, I'm interested in the chain about how you yeah. go from a single LED through the micro mirrors to produce the end result. One of the things that, um, you know, to create this really stunning image, to create a very natural feeling image, is there's a great advantage to actually decouple how you generate the light versus where you modulate the light. And that's, that's the issue that a lot of the um, emiss emissive panels have. Right, where the light is generated the same place where it's modulated. By separating these out, we're able to create a really natural kind of light that, that you know, collimated, far field, really comfortable white light that you're used to seeing. 
and then modulating it down the road with the reflective panel. Do you have a ballpark estimate of uh, price that you guys are aiming for in your in your uh, consumer market product? So we're not ready to release the price yet. Uh, you know, in a couple months we're going to be releasing the form factor, the price, the name of the product. So there's a lot to be looking, lot to look forward to in the next couple months. Uh, you know, we're we're trying very hard to make sure that it's, a, it's an affordable product that the general consumer you know can pick up. So what's the compatibility like right now? Is it pretty much anything with HDMI uh, you can hook it up to? Yeah, it's right now the compatibility is extremely high. We want to make sure that it can work with uh, almost all the devices you already own. If that's your smartphone, your tablet, your PC, your, your console, and almost all the media that comes with it. We want to make sure that it's as content and as, as source agnostic as possible. And the prototype that we saw uh, was a little bit bulky on the eyes. Yeah. Of course, you can change the mounting, but yeah. is it possible to bring that down in size to a more comfortable level? Absolutely. So we're, we're in the middle of our next product development, and with the new kind of optics and electronics that we're using, we already expect the product to be half the thickness that we saw, half the vertical height, half the weight, and we expect it to be battery powered as well. And how's the power consumption? I understand you want to have basically a fully contained system so that if you wanted to hook it up to your smartphone without, you know, on the bus maybe, you yep. could do that. Yep. Uh, what's the power like? What kind of battery life would you expect to be able to get? We expect, uh, we expect people to use it for at least a full length feature film continuously. So we expect to see at least a few hours out of the device with continuous use. Um, and then we can always plug it in and continue to use it, almost like a PlayStation 3 controller kind of. So with the current prototype, you can adjust independent eye focus as well as yes. IPD. Um, is there any need to adjust uh, back and forth? And are both of those features, the independent uh, eye focus and IPD adjustment, going to make their way into the consumer model? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we approach these things almost like a medical device, and we want to make sure that it's compatible with all the people that want to use it. That's why we have all these adjustments in it. We feel like if you have to wear glasses with the device, it's really cumbersome and uncomfortable. So we, we, we took the, went the extra mile to design a product that could adjust for your eyes, right? Both your diopter, your IPD, your eye relief. So all these adjustments you're going to see in our final prototype. Now for people who want a really immersive experience where they feel like they're just sitting in a dark room in their TV, do you have any um, idea if the final form factor is going to stop you know, light from coming in? Will there be any options for that? So we're exploring a lot of these options and we're gonna see what the customer feedback is, right? If what do people really want? Do they want that really you know, immersive blocked out view of you or maybe they don't. So you know, we're getting a lot of feedback from, from a lot of people that we talk to, uh, trying to get the user experience right. And so we're open to a lot of the suggestions and you know, the, the general community, you know, a lot of passionate people on Road to VR that, that we love to see what people are saying and, and uh, kind of get their feedback. And can you tell us about your plans for the future for the product? Uh, how are you going to bring it to market? Uh, so we expect to have a crowdfunding campaign, a pre-sales campaign next quarter, early in the quarter. So look for us maybe on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, for this product to, to, to ship later in the year. Uh, so definitely follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook to get all the latest news and updates that uh, you know, they're going to see in the, over the next few months. And uh, after that, are you, is it going to be website sales or that's obviously far down the road? Have you thought that far? Yeah, we've, we're actively thinking about it. And so, you know, we're, we're talking to a lot of strategic partners right now to figure out what's the right distribution model. And uh, hopefully we'll have something that, uh, that is a win for the consumer market. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And appreciate good luck it. with the rest of the show. Thanks.